another Impact pay-per-view. We are reviewing Bound for Glory. It was a very interesting card, and that ending was very interesting. But, welcome to a brand new episode of Can We Talk Wrestling, and we are starting... We crowned a new digital media championship. It's obviously the first digital media championship. And I will say that um, my predictions were mostly correct, except uh, Mickey James and Moose screwed up my predictions. So thank you, Moose and Mickey James. Y'all great. So Jordan Grace is the new Impact Digital Media Champion. So this match was really fun and it was really interesting to see like three guys and three girls just like getting like getting public match time. Obviously this was on the pre-show, it wasn't on the main card, but it was just a really fun match overall. I think Grace is the perfect person to win this match and hold that championship for the first time just because of the fact that she... I feel like in Impact she's very underrated and you know it is a big deal because now she is the first ever triple crown, woman triple crown winner because she won the Nakash Championship, she won the Nakash Tag Team Championships, and now she has this title. So I'm really hoping that they do a lot with her with that championship and it just doesn't get like buried in the corner. But overall really good match, really fun, and I'm really excited for Jordan Grace. And what a way to kick off the pay-per-view because we had the inspiration taking on Decay for those Impact Knockout Tag Team Championships. And I did not expect the icon I did not expect the inspiration to have a live performance even though I knew that like they recorded their own theme song. And it was just so good to see them in the ring again. You could see how excited they were. You could see how, like, they were really taking in this moment. And just, you know, we got fired from WWE, but we're going to make the best of it. And we're going to show WWE why they were wrong in their decision. Which I feel like is a lot of people's mindsets of, like, look, here we go. And when we get to Dion and Mickey, we'll talk about that. But this match was fun. I think it was obviously the inspiration we're going to win. Just because I don't think they would bring them in to lose. And I'm really excited what they're going to do with the Nagas Tag Team Championships. I mean, I know that compared to WWE, Impact does have a couple more tag women's tag teams that they could throw into the mix. But I think, you know, now that you have the inspiration running that whole division, I think you need a couple more names to kind of fill the voids. But this match was fun. Decay is just a really fun tag team. You know, I'm expecting that they're going to run that match back again so they could get their rematch calls. And overall, it was really fun and really excited for the inspiration. Very, very excited. But this damn triple threat for the X Division Championship, Jesus Christ, Trey Miguel. Oh, I've been a huge fan of Trey for a very long time. And I think, like, I did always question, like, why Trey didn't go with MSK to WWE. But now, like, looking at it, I feel like they, he made the right decision. So it was Trey Miguel, Steve Macklin, and El Phantasmo. And it was my first time seeing El Phantasmo wrestle. And oh my god, this guy's insane. So he was, like, on the ropes, right? And st I believe it was Steve Macklin that went to go knock him off. And he jumped over him and landed back on the ropes and hit a hurricanrana at a Trey Miguel. I was like, whew. Oh my god, crazy. This match was really fun. Trey, I think I think they made the right decision in making Trey win. And you could just see the emotion on his face of how excited he was that he did win the X Division Championship. The X Division, to me, is probably the best thing Impact has, besides their women's division. They have such an in-depth X Division division. An X Division division. Wow. They have a, such an in-depth mid-card division that they just do so much with. And you see so many people who've won that X-Division Championship that has gone on to win the Impact World title. Some people have gone to sign with WWE or AEW or just other promotions. So, very excited for Trey Miguel. And I would not mind if they ran back Trey Miguel and Hal Phantasma. Would not mind if they did that. So I believe the next match was the Tag Team Championship. Oh no, Heat Slater. Forgot about that guy. So Heath Slater and TBA versus Violent by Design. So I did never, I never realized that they kicked Rhino out of Violent by Design. I said this like on my predictions, like, oh, it's not going to be Rhino because Rhino was in Violent by Design. No, they kicked Rhino out when they lost the tag team championships because they blamed Rhino. So they did the classic two on one and like, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. Oh my God, it's Rhino, yay. 
Rhino makes a save, Heat Slater and Rhino win. They're just such a fun tag team together. I think that Heat Slater and Rhino is a tag team I never knew I needed. And when they put them together in WWE, I was like, oh, this is different. But they're just really fun. You can see like how much chemistry they have. And Violent by Design is also really talented. I think it's great that Eric Young is really leading that faction. And he he's just like the king of leading factions, like aces and eights. He did um, his faction in WWE before everyone got fired, except for Nikki Cross. So this is a fun role for him. And this match was fun. I mean, it was kind of just like a filler before, you know, all the mayhem started. But fun match overall. And now we're going to call our shot. So, geez. So, I don't know why I expected such bigger names to be like in the 15 TBA competitors. But Rocky Romero was in there, which I thought was really interesting. The Demon was in there, which was all like, whoa, crazy. Um, I think those were all like the shocking TBAs that I was like, oh, that's cool. But Moose won. So for me, I, I was intriguing that Moose and Matt Cardona was the final two. I was like, oh. But for some reason, I just didn't see like Moose winning. I don't know why, and I don't know, maybe it was because like he was kind of just in the feud for the world title that I just didn't see like Moose winning, and I felt like it made more sense for William Morrissey to win. But now, William Morrissey and Moose could feud for the world title. But I was so upset William Morrissey didn't win. I was like, bro, this makes perfect sense. <laughs> but this match was fun. I like that it's not the typical battle royal. And it's like a regular Battle Royal and the final two is a regular match. I think that's kind of cool. And something it's something that differs some from the Royal Rumble. Or differs some from a Casino Battle Royal. You know, everyone has this Battle Royal stipulation, but everyone does it different, which I really enjoy. And, you know, like, that's what they teach you in, like, wrestling school. Because I remember Booker T said this on Tough Enough. You know, everyone does the same moveset, but it's up to you to make it different, to make it stand out. So when you hit this move differently, oh, that's a move set for you. You can only hit that move that way. I can't hit that move that way. So I think like doing the battle royal a little bit differently like that is a really key thing for impact. And my good brothers, oh thank god they, I was so scared they weren't going to win. So we had good brothers versus Finn Juice versus the Bullet Club. And these six tag teams are absolutely amazing. The good brothers obviously took the win here. And I think they make a good point, especially if this impact AEW partnership is ending, which was the heavy rumor that it was. I don't know who's next for them in Impact because I feel like they've beaten every tag team there unless they just signed new tag teams. So I don't know. Maybe the Impact title Forbidden Door is open to other promotions like a Ring of Honor or a GCW. I really don't know. But I, do, I find it interesting. I don't know what's next for them. But this match was fun. And for our match of the night, <laughs> Deanna and Mickey didn't have to go this hard. They really didn't. Damn. You could tell, like, I always say that, like, dream matches are meant to be dream matches because you don't think you're going to see them. And these two, literally, damn. You could see, like, Mickey did her, Mickey did the DDT and Deanna kicked down. Then Deanna did the Queen's Gambit and then Mickey kicked down. And the commentator's like, oh my god, like, no one's ever kicked out of the DDT. And they're like, oh my god, no one's ever kicked out of the Queen's Gambit. Oof. I, so for me, it didn't necessarily make sense for Mickey to win. Just because, A, she was, um, Deanna was 30 days away from breaking Ty's record. And two, if she's doing all this work with NWA, I don't see why she's going to win the Knockout Championship. But I'm assuming the Forbidden Door is open between NWA and Impact, where you're going to see a lot more of that fluidity between Impact and, and NWA, especially because NWA is very much trying to rebuild their women's division with Mickey being the cornerstone of that. But I'm happy Mickey won. She's now a 10-time woman champion between WWE and Impact. And please watch this match. Like, I think this match for me is one of my matches of the year. It was just so freaking good. You could tell that this match was everything these two wanted. They were super proud of it. You could see, like, Deanna was like, oh my god, like, this is really happening. But it, it was just so much fun. Like, this to me was match of the night. Obviously, like, the main event was really good, too, besides the ending, and we'll get to that. But wow. Like, th and this match got time. This match went for like 15 to 20 minutes. When do you see that from a co-main event? You don't see it. That's how much faith Impact had in these two when they delivered. And I'm excited to see, and it also opens the door for a lot of dream matches for Mickey. Because they're, like I said, their women's division is like one of the best things they've had. You could, ha you could run back the Madison Rain Mickey James feud. 
You could do that. <laughs> um, you could do Jordan. Well, you could do Jordan Grace too. Obviously, Jordan Grace and Mickey. That would be super fun. But there's a lot of dream matches in there. Impact. One of the best things Impact has is their women's division. I can't wait to see everything that her and Mickey, her and Gail Kim are going to work towards to make sure that Impact is known for having the best women's division. And for our main event, Jesus Christ, Impact. <laughs> Like, I feel like this ending is the reason I stopped watching Impact. Like, I was like, oh, oh. So, Christian Cage versus Josh Alexander. This match was before the ending, before Moose. This match was phenomenal. This was a technical masterpiece. Um, so many counterpoints. There were so many moments where you thought Josh had it, but Josh didn't quite have it yet. Or that Christian was going to win just because he's that veteran and he knows this inside and out. And he's worked for so many major promotions. But Josh won. Josh won, Christian handed the title over to Josh, and it was like, yes, passing of the torch, here we go, his son came in the ring, his wife came in the ring, and that was a huge part, if you watched the beginning of Bound for Glory, they showed that in the video package, like, when he won the Exhibition Championship, he came home and gave the title to his son so proudly, and he was so excited to give the world title to his son, but then, I didn't realize... So I knew the Call Your Shot worked like a Money in the Bank, but I felt like because the stipulation is so new and Impact, they haven't done that yet... Moose attacks Josh Alexander, calls a shot with his wife and kid in the ring, and he pins Josh Alexander, and Moose wins. So for me, the only reason I didn't necessarily like it is because I feel like you ruined Josh Alexander's moment. And I realized like this is a way to turn Moose super heel and like Josh super babyface to have Josh chase the title again at turning point? No. Whatever the January, the January pay-per-view, it's not, uh, it's not Genesis, they changed it. Blood something, I think. They changed the January pay-per-view. It's January 8th in Dallas. I forgot the name. But it's a way for him to chase it, which I completely understand, but I felt like there were better ways to do it. I just, that ending just wasn't for me. Like, I was like, wow, like, that's kind of upsetting. And you feel bad, and I like, you know, that's wrestling's job, but I was very confused why they did that. I wouldn't have done that. You know, I just would have had Moose. Or maybe do that, but not.